This May, celebrate with a month of Martha original ideas. Now you can have this pot full of dirt. Every idea with that Martha twist. And eat it too. Next Emmy Award winning Martha, she's an Emmy Award winner herself. Oh, that girl. The beautiful Marlo Thomas, and she's here to reveal the secret to Martha's strangely edible arrangement. I'll show you just how to bake it. Then, talk about a celebration. Right here on this stage, Chicago. Performing your favorite songs, next. What a lovely day. Um, I spent the night in New York after a very exciting evening last night. It was the Time 100 uh, dinner. I was um, uh, named an influential person last year. And uh, as that, I was re-invited this year to come with the, the next uh, group of 100 most influential people. It was at the Time Warner Center. Um, and um, my table was very exciting. We had Ralph Nader sitting next to me, who was very interesting. Uh, we had a Lauren Bush uh, with her boyfriend, who is um, um, Ralph Lauren's son. And so if she gets married to him, her name will be Lauren Lauren. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I sat next to Steve Wynn from Las Vegas, who is amazing. Uh, he is just nonstop energy and uh, told me a lot about his plans for uh, more um, gaming uh, hotels and uh, Las Vegas and elsewhere in the world. He's building a very, very large one in uh, China right now. It's just extraordinary. There was J-Lo, there was Diddy, there was Queen Rainier, uh, Rainia, there was uh, Steve Colbert. He was the master of ceremonies and he was hysterically funny. Condoleezza Rice, uh, the Dixie Chicks, and Paul Simon performed. Uh, it was quite an evening and uh, lots of fun. Um, so um, thank you, Time, for uh, inviting me. We had a, we had a lovely, lovely time. Uh, we're in our second week of May celebrations. Uh, and last week, we had a lot of fun making some of my favorite items, like the meatloaf and mashed potatoes in the shape of this buttercream cake. Doesn't that look cute? Uh, I took one home. My <laughs> Everyone who works at my place up in Bedford ate it for like two days. They loved it. They thought it was the most fantastic thing, and they're all making it for their kids' birthday parties. Uh, we also had a huge response on our website to the monkey cake for a children's birthday party. Uh, and these hi-hat cupcakes that we made for our Sweet 16 party. If uh, you haven't made those hi-hats or those other two things, oh boy, you should really try. Because we have been getting thousands and thousands and thousands of um, requests on our website at MarthaStewart.com for the recipes and the instructions. And today I'm going to show you, now don't these look like wonderful little mint plants growing right here in front of me with little bits of pebbles on top? Well, these are wonderful cakes, little chocolate cakes, served in, not so little either, served in a uh, flower pot, uh, one per person. It's a very cute thing for springtime. And these pebbles, well, they look like pebbles, don't they? But they're really candies. And I love how this looks. Uh, another cute um, alternative to the typical dessert. What I love about all the ideas this month is that they are clever, they're creative, they will truly impress your guests, and um, most of you can uh, make these things. It's just easy. Uh, just follow along and trust me, um, if I can make them, you can make them. Um, I've been at it for a while, but... Uh, <laughs> But I just want you to know that this is simple. And don't forget, you can win $10,000 to throw your own celebration. All you have to do is go to MarthaStewart.com and answer the question of the day. And then you're eligible. If you answer correctly, you're eligible for the uh, $10,000. It will be put into a big, um, you know, I guess a big bowl, and the name will be pulled out electronically. Remember, the question is about yesterday's show or last Friday's show. Uh, today's question is, what famous TV chef did Mario Cantone uh, impersonate while in my kitchen making baked potato ice cream sundaes? Uh, did he impersonate Mario Batali, 
Emerald Lagasse, Julia Child, or me? Answer the question correctly and you can win the $10,000. Imagine all the chocolate flower pot cakes you could make with $10,000 <laughs> and how many people you could entertain. Uh, what a nice looking audience. You all look great today. It's, uh, it's very nice. No rain yet. We're expecting rain, which we need. We are, we're already so, suffering a little drought and we need for all our new spring plants. How are you tulips doing, Joey? They're doing wonderful. Oh, yeah? Well, actually, they're, they're kind of done at this point. Yeah. So, um, we actually, we, have, uh, we had pictures, and I brought oh, them in. And can I, I see them real brought, quick? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there. But there they are, right That's there. It. Oh, what kind see? of tulip is that? That looks like a rose. It's called an angelique. Isn't that nice? Yes. Angelique. Yeah. Oh, see how that? great. Yes. I, I grew that. Now, see? those look at least 12 feet tall. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, Joey exaggerates about the size of his things. So, um, <laughs> his plants, that is. Okay. It's, 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 it's is that the only picture? What's that? Is that the only picture? The, uh, well, I have those those two pictures. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. So only Angelique's this year? Or many uh, that's others? all. I did a dozen of them in this small area that I had. Oh. There. Yeah. So I just put them in. Okay. Next year, another dozen, please. Yep. And I experiment with a different kind every oh, year. Oh, good. So, yeah. Excellent. So, thank you. Well, that's fun. See, he's a real gardener. My first guests are Grammy Award winning. Um, and they are a band who have been entertaining fans for almost 40 years. Since forming back in 1967, they have successfully produced an impressive 30 albums. Here to perform one of their all-time classics. Does anybody really know what time it is? Please welcome the band Chicago. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you? Nice to see you all. Good to see you. Great. 
see you, Martha. Right. Hi. Hi. Martha, hi. You're Robert? I'm Robert. You're Robert. Hi. This is how me. are you doing, Martha? How are you? So, uh, original four? Yes. That's us. Original that's the, four. And how come Chicago? What's the name, what's, where's the name Chicago from? Well, that's where we all started. We all went to school and grew up in Chicago. Oh, you did? You went, yeah. to, you went to college together? Or? Oh, well, some of us went to yeah. DePaul and some went to Roosevelt University. Fantastic. Reform yeah. school. At reform <laughs> school. Yes. And, you, and you, have, you have some uh, new guys in the band. But what's your secret for, for lasting this, this long and being so popular? Look, look what's in the audience. Now, are those friends or are those fans? Both. Chicago fans club. That's fantastic. They have, they have I, I, did, I don't have a t-shirt. Well, you have I, to get one. I need a t-shirt. That's right. <laughs> so um, why, why, do you, why does a band maintain such popularity besides having fantastic music and 30 albums? Uh, obviously. You're just nice, right? Uh, it's very nice. And we had no idea going in that this would be our life. But uh, really, it's just a matter of uh, writing or finding great songs and, and loving, loving making music. Well, thanks, guys. And uh, Chicago is going to be back later on in the show. And after the break, Marlo Thomas is going to be here. So don't go away. Later, Martha is going to show you a unique way to serve your party appetizers. Stay with us. Martha will be right back. Yes, is a true Renaissance woman who does it all. You know her from her breakthrough role in That Girl. And look what we found on eBay. <laughs> that Girl Barbie. <laughs> and more recently as Jennifer Aniston's mom on Friends. She's also a talented producer, a best-selling author, and devoted children's advocate. Please welcome Emmy, Golden Globe, Peabody, and Grammy Award winner Marlo Thomas. <laughs> Look what we have. We have all kinds of things. Did you know My we, gosh. Found, we found that on eBay? Oh, that's wonderful. The cutest. Yes, I used to be that small. <laughs> you, st you still look fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. I haven't seen you around the neighborhood. That's right. Are well, you traveling a lot? Yes, I'm on a book tour. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm having a wonderful time. Uh, Marlo and Phil live uh, down the street from my Turkey Hill house. Yes. And they have a really, uh, my Turkey Hill house is a little tiny house. Oh, yes. And looking For you. <laughs> looking down over you. And they live in this beautiful, beautiful yeah. uh, estate that was once owned by one of my friends, Lynn Rogers, remember? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah a long time ago. Yeah, she was very talented. Yes, yeah, yeah gorgeous. Well, I love that area. But uh, you have a new book. You have uh, all kinds of things happening. And this is the second book, The Right Words at the Right Time, which is um, a very nice nice inspirational book if you if you just want to see how real people have done it uh, this is the book to get. And the first book, Martha. I oh, yeah. Martha for the first book. And this is, yep, this is the first yeah, one, The Right Words at the Right Time. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I look back, I forgot um, exactly what I had said, but I said, I remember I was 15 years old and my teacher assigned us a book report. For some reason, I decided to write about the Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I quickly regretted my choice. This book was not easy for a ninth grader. What does, well, at that, way back then it was, <laughs> what does A stand for? Oh, adultery. What's adultery? <laughs> <laughs> and so then I had to have my father's help, and it was all about the influence my father had on my studies yeah. and on giving me uh, the right words of inspiration right. at the right time. But My but, father's words inspired the book. Oh, and what were yeah. they? Well, when I was a, a young actress and I was going to play Gigi in the Summerstock production, I was so excited. It was my first big break. And all the interviewers and all the reviewers were comparing me to him. You know, will she be as good as Danny Thomas? Will she last as long? That was pretty scary. And here's a picture of Marlo yeah. and the great Danny Thomas. Uh, this is so great. <laughs> anyway, I went, I went to my father in tears and I said, Daddy, I love you, but I don't want to be a Thomas anymore. I want to run as far away as I can from all this. And he said to me, I raised you to be a thoroughbred. And thoroughbreds run their own races. They don't look at any of the other horses. They just wear their blinders and they exactly. run. Exactly. And that's what you have to do. So run your own race has been my words all my life. And you have. And you have. <laughs> Thank and you. Even even being married to a superstar <laughs> Phil Donahue, you were uh, what, a, what a great couple. You've been married for how many years? 26. 26 years. Now, that's an accomplishment these days. <laughs> <laughs> it is. 
Oh. Well, I remember fondly when you came and visited up in Maine, remember? Oh, yes, that oh. little tiny house you live in. That up little there. one, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's, the, that's the big house, but I never get to, I don't get to go there enough. But It's um, beautiful, But though. we had a great day boating and, and talking and... And Phil, eating. And eating, and yeah, Phil right. took a great picture of Zuzu, and yes. he sent it to me. Me, yeah. Zuzu? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was so great. That's my black chow dog. Yeah, beautiful But anyway, dogs. Uh, and Phil's good? He's very good. Oh, great. He's working on a documentary. And he's very obsessed at the moment. Oh, I bet so he it's is. Great. Well, it's he's wonderful. an obsessive compulsive. Yes, he is. <laughs> hard working, like all of us. Hard working person. Yes, yes. Um, well, if, if you get these beautiful books um, with great words by Marlo Thomas and friends, uh, all the proceeds go to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Children's in, Research Hospital. Yes, huh? and uh, which was founded by her dad. And, mm -hmm. uh, and this is a, a wonderful, wonderful initiative. Well, today it's the leading research and treatment center in the world for children. For children. <laughs> yeah, so it's so great. So um, uh, everyone in the audience, by the way, is getting a copy of this book. So you please read it, enjoy it, tell your friends about it. And uh, is there any, any w well, one in particular what, I, that I, you should tell us about? I think what you should know about this book that's really interesting is that when this first book came out, it was all celebrities and famous people that I admired. And people wrote in and said, I have right words. You know, why didn't you ask me? And I'd be in the ladies' room at an airport, and somebody come up to me and say, I have right words. <laughs> So I thought, you know, let's have a contest and get regular people because celebrities get way too much airtime. So it's time for to hear from real people. And the most wonderful stories came in. And there is a, a many, many wonderful stories, but your producer said, you know, to pick one that yeah. wasn't too long. And there is one that is really one of my favorites and one of the first that came in. A woman named Cynthia Harris wrote it, and she's from Minneapolis. And she tells a story about that she was married for 43 years to this wonderful guy. They had six boys. And they moved around a lot because that they had, uh, he kept six moving jobs. Boys. Yes, six oh. boys. And, they, and he had kept changing jobs and moving. And every time she moved, it was difficult, you know, finding new schools and new friends. And, um, and she'd be kind of, you know, sort of devastated by it all. And he'd say, oh, don't worry, honey, you're just getting started. And when one of the boys would uh, make it on a baseball team, he'd say, look at you, you're just getting started. You know, or, or if they didn't make it, he'd say, well, don't worry, you're just getting started. <laughs> anyway, he died, and she was devastated. Here he she lost her lover, her best pal, and she just didn't think she'd be able to go on. And one day she woke up about six months later and she heard a little voice in her head, and the voice said, don't worry, honey, you're just getting started. Oh, <laughs> it makes you cry. It really is. Marlo's book, The Right Words at the Right Time, Volume 2, is in bookstores right now. When we come back, Marlo and I will continue our conversation in the kitchen while we make little flower pot cakes. Yeah. Coming up next, Martha shows Marlo a creative dessert idea that's perfect for a summer celebration, a flower pot cake. It's not only delicious, but easy to make. Stay with us. I'm back with Marlo Thomas, and for May celebrations, I'm showing her how to make these beautiful uh, mini flower pot cakes, and these are so cute. Uh, they're not so mini, though, don't you think? They're, no, they're good, delicious. A good, sizable, healthy. I could eat there. that whole thing easy. Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> These would be great for dessert at any party, and I think just serve them with a little um, silver spoon, and uh, out in the garden, people can walk around and eat their mint cakes. I think they're really cute. Well, if you start um, just, uh, if you brush the insides of the pots with a little bit of canola oil, okay. uh, fit this round in the bottom, and then oil that and just a tiny bit of oil and then sprinkle the insides with uh, cocoa. Okay. And I will sift the dry ingredients. Oh, this is like being with my mom in the kitchen. Uh -huh. so One fun. and a half cups of flour. <laughs> did she cook a lot with you? Yeah. Three... She taught me how to make Italian food. Oh, she did? Yes. Yeah. Three quarters of a cup of um, unsweetened best quality cocoa powder and one and a half cups of sugar. And we're going to sift this all together with three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Well, this I hope is a I very this simple, right. and one and a half uh, tablespoons of baking uh, soda. Uh, what would you do? Let well, I oiled a little piece of yeah. paper, and I put the cocoa it, on it. Okay. I'm so excited. Oh, no, the whole, the whole thing. You can just, oh, the whole thing? Yeah, just sprinkle, oh, oh, okay. sprinkle it all in there, oh, and all then right. shake it around, and you can just dump it out on here. So you go, go like this. Oh, and okay. And dust the whole side, like those. Oh, See? I got it. Yeah, we want the flavor of the cocoa, the dryness on the sides. That's <laughs> good. Oh, you're learning a little secret about me, aren't you? Ah. <laughs> so you're a big time cook, right? Oh, yeah. You cook every oh, day. Yeah. <laughs> she cooks every day for Phil. Yeah. And uh, 
and that's that's why I see you down on the post road at all those great restaurants, <laughs> right? This is an Italian. <laughs> I make Italian food. It isn't at all. <laughs> and uh, so to all those sifted dry ingredients, add three quarters of a cup of warm water, three quarters of a cup of buttermilk, which makes this a very nice moist cake. Uh, do you like buttermilk? Uh-uh. You don't? <laughs> no. What if do you, you like? To, Martha, no, what I will. do you what do you like besides Italian food? What kind of what, what's your favorite thing to eat? Uh, I like salads, I like fish, I like uh, filet of sole wrapped, you know, with the mm. vegetables inside. I'm a big vegetable person. A third of a cup of vegetable oh, oil goes in the cake. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> one okay. egg plus one egg yolk. So this is all a one bowl kind of cake. I made a mess. And three quarters of a teaspoon of vanilla. You're not making a I'm mess. I'm so nervous. Does that look okay? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But too much cocoa. Watch, watch though. Well, I want you to see how much cocoa. If you put all that in. <laughs> so that's oh. it. Just like that. Oh, you didn't have to tell them. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. You're that's doing okay. perfectly. I'm doing just fine. We just want to get the, get the whole sides coated. That's how you do it. And then okay. you just keep using that cocoa oh, until you're done. Ah. That much cocoa, they would I see. Die. I got it. Now. Okay. And so put your bowl on the mixer. You can do this with a wire whisk, too, by the way. You don't have to. Uh, if you are, have missed anything on this uh, demo, it's all at MarthaStewart.com. No problem at all. Just mix this up until it is completely mixed. And we have one over here. And we can just pour it into the flower pots. OK. And then you bake this. Preheat your oven to, um, to uh, 350 degrees. And uh, you have lots of ovens in your house. You still have that beautiful kitchen that yes. my friend put in? Yes, I love oh, that kitchen. That, I mean, wasn't that an amazing kitchen? Yeah, and nice you just and big. Pour this right in like this. See, this is, this is very, very easy. Three quarters cup full, or oh, okay. three quarters, two thirds. Just start with two thirds, and then we'll see how much batter is left over. But this is exactly the right amount of batter for six of these cute little flower pot cakes. And um, get it into the oven. These are three inch tall uh, flower pots. Um, I would not advise just taking a plant out and using that. Um, I would advise getting yourself some uh, brand new pots uh, and using those. You can get these at garden supply centers or uh, florist shops. They might have um, the flower pots for you. And then these are nice, dense, moist chocolate cakes that you will really enjoy, and everybody in your family or all your friends will enjoy it, too. Yeah. So do you think you'll make these, Marlo? Definitely. Yes, when? I'm gonna go home right when, now. No, when you're in Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. No, but I, wanna, I want to make them. I love, uh, I love darling little things. For, yeah, they're cute I love for entertaining. Surprise people. And also, nobody will eat it for a long time. They won't know what so it you, is. So you, entertain, you entertain a lot, don't you? I do, I love to entertain. I mean, you have those fantastic Christmas parties, yes, I which that. I really mm -hmm. enjoy being invited to. Yeah. And, uh, and delicious food and yes. very fun. So now I've miscalculated slightly and I have, see I have a little bit too much in these and not, not enough in that, so you just borrow. But that's the easy way to do it. And you put these in the oven and when we come back, they'll be done and I'll finish our flower pot case with some frosting and chocolate rocks. Later, get ready to grill. Martha has some delicious ideas for cooking foods on skewers. Stay with us. I'm back with Marlo Thomas, and uh, our flower pot cakes have come out of the oven like magic. Look how cute they puff up like that. And uh, Marlo's going to make the dirt. So it's just chocolate wafers inside a, a baggie, and you yeah. can just roll them really hard, really crush them up to make dirt. My grandmother used to make You're flowers. very good at making dirt. Yeah, Look I at this. <laughs> Fantastic. And then shake this up a little I, bit. You've got little pieces. I could pieces. dance on this, and it would really go fast. Uh, probably, yeah. So just keep breaking well, that that's up. that's a great party I once, my, a birthday party. My oh, husband what? wanted to know what kind of a party I wanted. And I said, let's have a Latin American dance party. <gasps> and so he Salsas had, yeah. and, and so mambos and these, tangos. And couple to come and teach us. Yeah. And all my friends came and ruined my floors, but it was a great party. Oh, I bet. Did they all wear our spiked <laughs> yeah. heels? Those yeah. metal spiked heels and, and boots. Oh my gosh! Yes. But yes. it was really fun. Uh, it is fun. And um, any other theme parties that you're going to have? Uh, I, I love to do parties, you know, around somebody's birthday. Like one year, we gave a birthday, a surprise party for somebody, and everybody came dressed like the person's favorite thing. Keep one guy came dressed you, as Jack you have Daniels. To, you have to crush. You have to crush while you're <laughs> harder, and, harder. And then one came as her wallpaper. <gasps> 
It was really fun. It was a great fun. Oh, so she dressed in her rolls of wallpaper? Well, oh everybody came as her favorite thing. So oh. they, they, they bought her wallpaper and wrapped themselves in it. It was fabulous. Huge fun. And then one year I gave a party and the place cards was everybody's baby picture. That's and that was really oh, hard. Oh, and they had to find their they spot? To, yeah, I had to call their mothers and everybody <laughs> to, get, to get the picture. Oh, can you imagine? I know, okay, but it so, was great. So if that's done, you can just dump it out on the counter. Oh, and Martha, gonna... I don't think it's Martha Stewart perfect. Oh, well, get, get all the big pieces broken <laughs> okay. up because we have to now dip, right, the, I'm ready. dip the cakes into the dirt, decorate with the little chocolate rocks. And don't these look like pebbles from your driveway? They do, they're great. I think they're just fantastic. So what do you do? You put this so, in the So you're gonna put the, you put the dirt yeah, right in the bowl, like that. And uh, so we have, we have a, uh, a lovely dirt, it's perfect. Oh, so good. you just dip it like that. So see, oh, cute. That, looks like, that looks like Very dirt, cute. main dirt. And then you put on some of the chocolate rocks. And these rocks, you can, uh, the source for these are on the website, and they're very, very cute. Um, they're tasty, too. Tasty. Oh, they are cute. Aren't they good? Very good. And then a pretty sprig of mint. Oh, there's so. chocolate in there, too. Yeah, no, they're chocolate. Very good. Right in the top of your little mint cake. And okay. that's it. Again. That's your cake. Cute, don't you think? Well, Marlo's going to be making these for Phil. <laughs> And uh, I'll be making them for my guests all summer long yeah, because they're, they're, they're going to adore these. And why don't you try them too? So, Marlo, thank you so thank much you. for visiting with us. <laughs> Have a great summer, and we hope to see you. And good luck with the book. Remember, don't forget to get a copy of the book, The Right Words at the Right Time. When we come back, I'll show you some unique ideas for making meat and vegetable skewers for your next party. Later, Martha makes a refreshing dessert, a quick and delicious tequila sorbet. Stay with us. We're back with another May celebration idea. Great parties begin with great hors d'oeuvres. And today I'd like to show you one of my favorite ways to serve them on party skewers. And there's all kinds of party skewers. Oh, are you bringing me some, uh, here's Wes, he's bringing me some sugar cane. Oh, so you're buying them. Yeah, it's just a oh. vacuum there. Oh, I always cut my sugar cane right <laughs> off. You know what sugar cane looks like. It's a, a beautiful, sweet grass that grows in the tropics. And, uh, but now you can buy sugar cane skewers, and these are so uh, sweet, and you can actually eat them, and they also flavor the food when you uh, use them. If you're going to use skewers like this, make sure that you cut one end uh, into a sharp point so that you can actually skewer the food that you're going to be um, uh, inserting on the skewer. These work very, very well. Um, if you go to an Asian store um, or to a, a fancy party store, you can buy all kinds of bamboo skewers. These are uh, Japanese skewers that they use for uh, yakitori. Um, you can grill with these. You can serve with these. Uh, these are beautiful uh, brown bamboo. These are so cute with the tied tops, um, small um, little toothpicks, and all kinds of other uh, skewers that uh, come in big packages. and. If you're going to use these, always soak them in water uh, before you put them on the grill. It really prolongs the life of the skewer to keep them soaked. Um, and so it's very simple. You can also use aromatic herbs that have woody stems like rosemary or thyme. Um, and uh, you just remove some of the leaves and you can skewer mushroom caps just like this. Oops. And you can put these right on the grill. And the uh, wood of the rosemary flavors the beautiful uh, mushroom caps. Uh, these are shiitake mushrooms. How pretty these are when they are cooked. Uh, brush them with a fragrant oil um, and season them with salt and pepper. You can also marinate them a little bit if you like. But what a great idea for a summertime barbecue uh, to have these beautiful um, skewered hors d'oeuvres. Because your grill is hot. The beef um, that we're going to show you how to, these are grilled beef rolls, and I'll show you from start to finish how uh, to make them. Uh, once you cut your beef, and this is a tenderloin of beef, you can put the beef on a piece of plastic wrap like this, cut it to be um, probably like um, an eighth of an inch thick. And then, to make them flat enough so that you can roll them, just pound them a little bit with a meat pounder. This works extremely well. You can have the butcher do this, but it's so easy to do at home, and it's nice to do right before you're going to roll it up so the beef doesn't shrink. And once they are flattened, 
you can just dip them into a soy sauce. This is one cup of soy sauce mixed with a half a cup of brown sugar. So don't forget to dip the meat and then add a yellow pepper, a red pepper, a little piece of green pepper, uh, a piece of scallion leaf, uh, seasoned with just a tad of black pepper and some salt. Roll this up. You want it flavorful, so, um, so make sure you do season. Roll this up, skewer it with soaked skewers, and have your grill really hot, but not with big flames. Um, one thing I think people make a big mistake um, is to put all their grilled things on too hot a fire. We're not charring here. I don't know if you remember April Fool's Day. I gave a lesson on charring. It was a joke, and some people actually don't thought I was serious. Uh, I am not um, a big charrer. I really care about uh, making food extremely flavorful. And here we have this grill pan. This works very well um, because it won't burn the bamboo skewers. If you have too big a flame, too, on the outside grill, you'll, um, you'll burn the food, you'll burn the skewers, and you'll have kind of a mess. But this takes about two to four minutes. Turn them once, and you have uh, really beautiful hors d'oeuvres. And you see those come off the grill. They'll have nice marks. This is what they look like when they come off. Just cut right in half with a serrated knife. Serve them, look how pretty they are inside. They're a little bit rare, just the way a beef skewer should be uh, cooked. And serve these to your guests. I guarantee that you will have happy guests and you will have delicious hors d'oeuvres. Um, all the hors d'oeuvres that I've been talking about appear in our hors d'oeuvre handbook. This is a book that's full of hundreds of hundreds of great um, hors d'oeuvres. Uh, we published that um, several years ago, but it's still in the bookstores. Uh, look for it because every single thing is delicious. So see how pretty? And there's a dipping sauce here. The other hors d'oeuvres that we've made, oh, I love these. These are um, salmon uh, and these are chicken and uh, avocado skewers on the, um, on the sugar cane. We have the wonderful little Italian sandwiches of mozzarella cheese and capers and lemon. Very, very pretty. And you just eat the little sandwiches. They're all skewered. One per person um, with a salad makes a very, very nice lunch. And um, one big tip, make sure the beef, um, when you're rolling it, is uh, uniform in size to cook evenly. Don't be, put great big pieces. And whenever you're doing skewered food like this, make sure each piece is the same size. And you're going to have a fantastic hors d'oeuvre party. And don't be afraid to experiment with all kinds of new ideas. Uh, put something you can put on here, a piece of peach, a piece of chicken, and a piece of pineapple, and it'll be delicious. Coming up next, another incredible performance by the legendary group Chicago. Stay tuned. Love will come back from their latest and appropriately titled album, 30. Once again, here is Chicago.
again. That's great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Wonderful. The 30 CD is in stores now, and everyone in our audience is getting one of these. And luck for the band on tour all year. Thank you, Chicago. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Thank you. a festive good thing to help celebrate at any time of year. This is perfect for a really, really hot day. And it can be a cocktail. It can also be a dessert. It's tequila soaked sorbet. Very, very easy to create. Uh, just choose a cute little glass like that and scoop one or two scoops of, I'm using lemon sorbet, but you can use other flavors of sorbet. You know what would be really good? Um, coconut sorbet. I had some yesterday. It was delicious. So just put this will take three scoops of this sorbet. And then just pour over a little bit of tequila. Oh, a tablespoon or so. Oh, doesn't that look good? Everybody in the audience is ready to imbibe. And uh, you can fill the glass if you want. If Then you'll have a really good party. Yeah, that looks good. And, uh, and then, don't forget, um, if it's going to be a dessert, you can sprinkle the top with just a little zest of lime. Looks pretty. Oh, that looks great. This is done on a great grater, you know, one of those nice wood raspy graters. And serve with a spoon. I like to serve it with a little straw right in the glass. And uh, walk around. This is great for the beach. It's great um, sitting out on the back porch. And... Uh, Quite fantastic. Isn't that cute? We have time to take a question from the audience right now, and I think we have, oh yeah, we have a question. Okay, great, Joey. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pearl Batesh. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Welcome. And I, thank you. I just wanted to ask you if you could remember what was the best party you ever threw. Oh, the best one. Well, I've had a lot of parties, as you can imagine. Um, well, it's, there's a couple, but one that comes to mind is the first book party I ever had at my house on Turkey Hill Road in Westport. We had, all my friends said they would come and cook their favorite things at this big book party. It was to celebrate and, and, uh, the book Entertaining. So I had one friend in the kitchen making risotto. I had another friend out on the grill doing her um, pulled pork. I had another friend making tortellonis down in the barn. Uh, we had, an, you know, every building on, at Turkey Hill Road, it's a little farm, had uh, something else delicious being cooked. And people just wandered around through the garden, uh, getting little plates of delicious food. We had country music, and it was a really, really nice party. Everybody had a great time. Thanks for your question. Tune in tomorrow when our May celebrations continue. Fran Drescher is going to be here, and she'll help us create simple, delicious summer rolls. And Billy Reese of Billy's Bakery is going to teach us how to make one of the most scrumptious cupcakes in New York. Have a great day.